Alright, welcome back. Today's project is the downtown ghost town and some 3D printed skins for the hotel. <clears throat> so, a little background. I uh, had come up with something that matched brick pattern sheets that I used for the original castings for the downtown buildings. This looks a lot like it, but I made the windows a little bit wider. Um, I wanted to get you know two bricks wide all the way across all the support columns, but that doesn't fit the windows too well that I originally made for the, the castings. So, came up with a revised version that uh, gave me two and a half bricks across there, but it made it a half brick wider. So you can see where it's a little bit wide. Now the sections with the wide windows <coughs> are just a bit wider than a concrete block. A concrete block is eight by eight by sixteen. Well it's nominal, it's kind of like a two by four, it's really not two inches by four inches. Uh, eight by eight by sixteen block is really seven and five eighths by seven and five eighths by fifteen and five eighths, and that's roughly one hundred ninety five millimeters by one hundred ninety five by almost four hundred, about three ninety five, a little over. So what I need is sections printed that need to be glued together. Now that's a limitation of my 3D printer. I can do each one of these is roughly five inches tall by eight inches wide. And uh, again, I, uh, five inches, that's roughly, I don't know, 78 millimeters in any case. These things get stacked together, and then I use a, a strip of bricks to make that seam make it stronger. Now I've already done that previously. I don't, know, I don't remember if I, I showed you that or not, <clears throat> but um, it gives you a nice seam on the back, and I can just flow the glue along there. I use um, one of these bottles with has a number of different tips. I'll just use this one to demonstrate. I'll show you the actual gluing here in a bit. But you fill that up with your liquid plastic cement and stream it along there. It uses capillary action, fills in the seams and welds it right together. In fact, what I use is weld on number three and uh, it's for acrylic plastics and PLA works real good with PLA. So I, uh, I wanted to try and get this part because what, instead of overlapping, what I really need to do is uh, just kind of sandwich that in between there like that because they're not quite tall enough. Short of printing a number of these, um, basically, I need three of these stacked up on <clears throat> three sides of the two end concrete blocks, and I'll need two more stacked up, and then two more stacked up side by side for the middle section. And instead of hand waving, I'll put some pictures up there. But uh, the idea is to start putting this together so we can get a skin out there and uh, fit it up. Now you might hear some noise outside the window, hands out there raking. So, um, all that being said, what I've run into is these sections are a little bit too wide and not quite tall enough. So. Rather than wait 
to print a bunch more of these that are the right size, perfect height, perfect width, or close enough. Um, it takes about three and a half hours to print one of these panels. And if you figure it takes three panels to cover one face of a block, well, there's nine hours. You might as well figure a day's worth of printing. So what I've been doing is cutting these down with just scissors. The, um, uh, they're just some chiclets. They want some yellow chiclets. But it's, it's fairly easy to slice this with a good pair of scissors. Um, it's only, the brick faces stand about 48 thousandths tall, which is about 1.2 millimeters. And then the backing, the smooth backing, I don't know if you can, uh, let's see if I can get the light just right. See how there's a, a bit of a, an edge here. That's about 24 thousandths. Oh, chicklets in there? <coughs> anyway. Seventy-two thousandths total. That's about one point eight millimeters, and uh, even so, it takes uh, it takes three and a half hours, like I say, to print. Maybe a little bit more. So I'm not real worried about these edges where they come together, like this on a corner. Let's see if I can get some better light here. about the extent of the reach. So, we will uh, have to use a corner square guide, kind of like in uh, my HO days. <laughs> we had the little magnetic corner guides to hold it, but uh, again, the idea is I'll, I'll print some more corner pieces that will wrap around that corner there that look like that. Oh, don't mind the vacuum. Pause here for a minute, get rid of the chiclets, and then we'll be back. And I was going to do some recording this morning, but uh, Ann's busy vacuuming up all the acorns out there. And uh, before that, she was blowing the leaves, and uh, I was going to clean the track, but now it's covered with leaves. So we'll, we'll let her finish doing what she's doing, and then uh, I'll be back to... Uh, Give you a little bit more on the downtown ghost town. <laughs> See you then. All right. <clears throat> Sorry for the abrupt change there. I cleaned up my work area here and off camera cut down two sets of these wall plates, if you will, and the joiners, and I'm gonna. Try and show you how I go about gluing these up. I'm not telling you this is how to do it. I'm telling you this is how I do it. I don't know if you noticed my little gadget, my latest one back here. It's uh, 2.8 by 2 inch, or let's see. Roughly, I don't know, 50 millimeters by 70, 71 millimeters. But it's a it's a hat. It plugs into an Uno or a Mega. This is a, a Mega, which has tons of I/O, or should I say, a Mega? In any case, it uh, it plugs into the connectors built into the board, snaps in there. And you just plug it in to program it or power it using a USB printer cable, like what I have on the 3D printer itself. All right, so let's start by flipping these over. I'm going to try this two different ways. First, I'm going to try and tape it on the back and flow the glue in the front. And I'll try it the other way around by taping it in the front and flowing it on the back. In fact, you know what? I'm going to start with doing it on the front. So, let's do this. <laughs> Rock.
Rocket's not happy that he has to stay in the house. Obviously. Alright, so. Oh, scissors are right here. So, let's see here. Right. Some nice grippy tape there, but I'm a little off. So, let's peel this up. So, let's see how this works. Actually, try this one different. So, disregard. <laughs> Start by putting a Strip down to just cover that last row of bricks there, first row of bricks. I snip that to size, set that aside. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to match up pretty good. No, I'm not liking that. Let's try it the other way. Alright, so. That right, looks like that'll work. Okay, now let's see. Next piece. Like I say, we'll see if this works. I'm hoping it works as well as it did the first time with the sections with the wider windows. Well, hello there, little one. Hi, you want to be out with Mama, don't you? Rocket coming in looking to see why aren't we outside. Next step is to get my container of gobs and goose. <laughs> I don't know if you can see my label there. Model glue and goo. <laughs> I kick, I kick. Crack myself up. I kick myself too sometimes, but <laughs> all right. You see how this this is how it's shipped. This is the weld on number three, and I'll take it out of the bag here in a minute. I'm reluctant to do so because it evaporates so quickly. Um, that can was, if I remember right, twenty nine dollars as of October. 2021 or whenever I bought it, probably October of 2020. But anyway, it's probably easier just to leave it in there. I don't know if you can see that side grip weld on number three, very fast set. Now I also have number four, which gives you a little bit more working time. It's a fast set versus very fast set. So, I will tell you, you've probably got maybe 30 seconds before this stuff is really sticky gooey. And after a minute, I don't think you'll get it apart short of cutting it apart. So, let's see. bought a number of these bottles that have uh, an assortment of hypo ends. They're, they're blunted, you know, to where you still have to be careful. You will uh, puncture yourself real quick with them, but uh, I like to get the smallest metal one because that's the smallest tip I have. It flows the least amount, but still flows more than, I'm sorry, I have to look and see which the smaller one is. Now let me see if I can find the, I thought I'd left it out. Let me see if I can find it here. 
There's one that came with it in the kit that I bought. They come with a protective tip because unlike the other ones, these are hypo needles they look like. But uh, this is, I don't know if you can hear that. Let me kind of, it's so, it's so hard to squeeze that and get anything to, and even then, the, just the vapor pressure of this stuff likes to push it out of that little nozzle. But it's so hard to work with. Now to put those out of the way. Oh, the other thing, yeah, it comes with a, a cap to cap it off. But I recommend that when you're done using the goop, the glue, that... Uh, Pour whatever's left back into the squeeze whatever's left back into the can. So now what I'll do is I'll draw some up into my bottle here. Ooh wee. Alright, I don't know if you can see that. Just a little bit, and that's even too much. More than I'll need for what I'm doing today. But this stuff is potent very potent in fact it's chloroform in another, in another form so what I'm doing is I'm just trying to run it along the, the seam here and let it flow out naturally and we'll give that Time to set up, try and wiggle it back and forth. Try and get it down in there. Get it to start melting those surfaces together. But, uh, we'll let that set there for a minute. And I will mention that uh, not much you can use to scrape this with. I'll try a piece of ABS this time. See how it brings up the, the melted plastic there. So let's see, is it? It's uh, it's almost solid there. So we'll leave that sit for a minute or two. And uh, oh yeah, don't get it on you. <laughs> Stuff works pretty good on ABS, but uh, not as good as uh, acetone would. You can see the plastic still kind of ooey gooey there. So, uh, when they say fast set, they mean fast set, not fully cured. Super fast set, whatever it was. They said. Yeah. Let's see. I think that'll be some leak through here. Do I have an issue with? No, I don't. All right. So tape's peeled off. That's yeah, still a little bit weak. Yeah. We'll put another piece of tape on there and hit that seam again, or at least let that seam sit up. Sometimes what will happen is, you saw how gooey sticky that was. Sometimes you'll end up with the plastic in the tip. And you have to let it soak in there enough to melt it. So don't, don't get... Uh, Set or worried if your tip kind of clogs up. It's 
easily melted by just dipping it in the pan. So. I guess I should do the uh, obligatory no affiliation on the, the weld on. It was just uh, one of the things that one of the products that I found on Amazon that was available to fulfill my need for a liquid plastic cement that worked on PLA. Oh, Briggle hears something, sees something. I'm not sure what he sees. I don't see anything on the security cameras here. But at least he let us know. He can see things that I can't. <laughs> All right, I think, I think that's going to be good enough. Let's get the next layer here. I guess it really doesn't matter um, which side it goes on. I don't know if you can let me show you. I put a a row of thin bricks on there already, thinking it would be covered by the the strip, and if not, it would make a nice ending. But uh, you can see that uh, has the small bricks on the top, and then regular bricks on the bottom. So there is kind of a polarity, I don't know what it is, uh, directionality. And of course, when I, I remember what that word is, I, it, I'll be off camera. So <laughs> Y'all can put it in the comments if you want to help out my CRS here, because I can't remember stuff. All right, let's see if I can this up without making a major. Let's do one at a time here. I think that'll be close. Alright. Peel this up a little bit. I hope my fat hammy hands not getting in your way too much here. Maybe I need some more forgiving, less sticky tape here. I don't know. We'll see. Right, so. Put this together. All right, that should be close enough. I guess I worry more about these little close tight tolerances than I should. I mean, with scale modeling, anything that's out of scale instantly draws your eye. It looks kind of, looks kind of clownish, cartoonish. So let's see here. Let me get some of the excess off. You can see it's starting to melt some of that ABS. We'll let that sit up. And then that'll be one uh, one of the towers. <laughs> so I've got, a, I've got another one queued up here. I'll probably do that off camera. And then we'll come back. And, whoop, big fat arm in the way. <laughs> We'll come back and uh, maybe take it outside and see how it looks. See you then. All right, I'm going to wrap this up at this point. I'll leave you with our welcome fall display. These are some photos. I don't know if you can see in the background there of the skin on the Grand Hotel. This was just a test fit, if you will, and see how everything looked. We'll bring you back with uh, part two, so stay tuned.
Thanks for watching.